Hello, my little mathematicians. Today, we're going to be expanding upon our GCF lesson and do what's referred to as pulling out a GCF so that we can rewrite an expression as a product and a sum. We're going to do that using the worksheet that looks like this on one side and this on the other side. Okay, so it's double sided and it's going to be a foldable. So let's get started. First off, to know that this is what it's asking you to do, you'll see the directions written as something like this. Rewrite this expression as a product and a sum, or rewrite this expression by pulling out a GCF and using the distributive property, or use the distributive property and pull out the GCF to rewrite the expression. I think you're seeing the gist of this, okay? Um, normally they'll just say pull out a GCF and we do what we've done in the past. But if you see these types of phrases, we're going to do what we're about to do in just a second. Okay. So first of all, we'll be given an expression just like before. Um, the only thing is normally it was an and symbol between here. So you're finding the GCF of this number and this number, but this time you'll notice there's a plus or minus sign between them. And that's what makes it an expression because an expression has numbers separated by plus or minus signs. And then I'm going to rewrite it as a product. So that's something being multiplied by a sum. And that product is going to be the GCF out in front And then quotient one, which is going to be used with this number and quotient two. Which is going to be used in some way with this number. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing we want to do is to find the GCF of those two numbers. And if yours has a line right here, just go ahead and cross that off. We don't need that. Okay, you're just gonna find the GCF of the two numbers. Then, in order to do that, we do exactly what we did before, okay? So I'm going to write my 48 and my 56. To find the GCF, I do the preferred method of the latter method, and I think, what number can go into both of these numbers? I know 8 can go in. And 8 times what is 48? 6. 8 times what is 56? 7. Just like before, if you can't keep going anymore, if these two numbers have no more common factors, you know you're done. The number along the outside is your GCF. So that's going to go in front. Then this number down here is going to be represent your quotient one because it's this first number divided by your GCF, right? That goes here. And then your second number down here is going to go in this spot. That's representing quotient two because it's the second number divided by your GCF. What this is saying is that this is the same thing as the left side. I just rewrote it as a product. I'm multiplying something with the sum of something else. And the specific thing in front is the GCF. So if I multiply this out, or the common word is distribute, I should get what I started with. Double check. 8 times 6 is 48. Mm -hmm. 8 times 7 is 56. And if you have nothing in common in these parentheses, no other factors that can go into both of them, and when you multiply this number out in front, you got the same thing that you started with over here, you know that that is the correct expression of rewriting this as a product and a sum. Okay, so what we did is we first, we found the GCF. Then we divided each number by the GCF. After we did that, 
we rewrote the equation so that it looked like this. We put what on the outside? The GCF. And we put it on the outside of those parentheses. We put the quotient of each of those numbers on the inside of the parentheses. Now, some of you guys are thinking, wait a minute, I didn't know that eight could go into this. I'm gonna be so lost. No, you're not. Okay, let's just pretend that we, okay, we rewrote these numbers. We had 48 and 56 again. Same thing as last time. But you didn't know that eight could go in. You only saw two. Okay, so two goes into 48 two times, and um, or two goes into 48 24 times, and two goes into 56 28 times. Now I'm not done because 24 and 28 have a common factor. So I'd pull out another number, and I see four as able to go into both of those. Four times what is 24? A six. And four times what is 28? A seven. I can't keep going. So this, notice, is the same number as here that went there. And the seven is the same number that was here and goes there. And out in front, your GCF is still the same because two times four is still eight. So even if yours looks slightly different, as long as you didn't make a math error, you'll still get to the right answer. So let's try that with this second example. We have three and we have six. Okay, I'm going to do my ladder method to try to figure out the GCF and I think three can go into both of those numbers. Three goes into three once and three goes into six twice. There are no other numbers or factors in common for one and two. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my GCF three out in front. That first quotient of one inside parentheses. And then after the plus sign, I'm gonna put that second number there. Okay, and that's all there is to it whenever it asks you to rewrite an expression as a product and a sum or the complicated directions. Rewrite this expression by pulling out a GCF and using the distributive property. That's all this is saying, okay? And the distributive property is kind of what we did when we were checking ourselves. We were like, okay, three times one is three and three times two is six. Mm -hmm, yep, that equals what I started with. So I know that that's the right answer, three times one plus two. And so we can kind of show that a little bit better. Let's look down below. This is the steps if I'm gonna check myself, okay? So the first thing is Remember that whenever things are stuck together, we have to multiply. And what that means is that seven is stuck right next to that parentheses. There's no sign between it. That means that I'm gonna multiply it with each number inside the parentheses, okay? And again, what I'm saying is here we have a number stuck next to a parentheses, like I just showed. So we will multiply across. We call this the distributive property. Distributive, D-I-S-T-R-I-B-U-T-I-V-E property. When you do the distributive property, you're going to multiply the GCF that's on the outside and the first number. So let's see what that actually looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna take the GCF that's on the outside and multiply it with the first number. So that's seven times eight. Well, seven times eight is 56. So my first product is going to go there. That's product one. 
Then I repeat with the second number. Okay, so I'm gonna again multiply that GCF out in front with this time the second number. So bring down your plus sign and you have seven times six this time. Well, seven times six is 42. So this time I'm gonna put a 42 here and that's representing product number two. Because remember when we multiply two things, that's called a product. After you're done with that, you have just written the new expression. So I would put that up on my line right here. This would be my answer. It's 56 plus 42. That represents the same thing as seven times eight plus six. And again, what this is doing is this is kind of just like we're checking our things up above. So in fact, when I go to fold this, okay, you just fold it in half. The top part, this is what we're most likely gonna be doing. We're learning how to pull out a GCF to check if we got it right, we'll use the distributive property. Okay, so I just wrote myself a little note that that's why we do this step right here. Okay, so inside, if you ever see directions like this, rewrite it as a product and a sum, or rewrite this expression by pulling out a GCF and using the distributive property, you might wanna pause it and write those directions down on the top of your foldable so you know when you're supposed to do this. That would be smart. Okay, if the directions ever look like this, this is what it wants us to do. Okay, and then this is how we check ourselves. Congratulations on mastering yet another difficult concept. I'm so proud of you.